If you're going to do your academic writing in plain text, Pandoc is a program that you absolutely must know how to use. And so that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Hi everyone. So specifically, I'm going to start this video by talking about what Pandoc is and what it can do. And then I'll show you how you can install Pandoc on your computer. And then finally, I'll end with an example on uh, how you can use Pandoc to convert a plain text file into a rich text file. Before we start, though, I just want to say that Pandoc is a very complex program. There are lots of options. It's very powerful. There are lots of things you can do. And I'm not going to go over every single option in this video. Rather, the objective is to just give you a quick guide to get you up and running. So my advice is start with this video. If you are interested in learning more, then just go over to the Pandoc website and begin trying things out. But for now, let's just stick with the basics and let's get started. So quickly, what is Pandoc? Well, if you go to the Pandoc website, it'll tell you that it's a universal document converter. And there are two ways to think about this. First, you can think about the conversion of text markup. So remember that in an earlier video, I said that Markdown was a type of markup language. That is to say, you use symbols in the text to signify or symbolize how the formatting will look in your final document. For example, if you want a word to appear in italics, you surround it with asterisks. And so one thing that Pandoc will do is simply convert this from one markup language to another. For instance, HTML uses these tags to symbolize italics, and Pandoc will convert that. Likewise, it could also convert it to the way you signify this in LaTeX. The other way you can think about Pandoc is as a converter for standalone files. So if I have a file whose format is .md for markdown or .txt for text, Pandoc will change it to a Word document or DOCX. Likewise, it could also change it into an HTML document. So in summary, Pandoc converts text, either autonomous text from one markup to another or text that's contained in a file from one file format to another. So just keep that in mind while you're working with Pandoc. For now though, let's go to the installation process. So I'm starting with a Firefox window open and I've already gone to the pandoc.org website. We'll install Pandoc in just a second, but before, I just want to point out two quick things. First of all, there's a great section on the Pandoc website on getting started with Pandoc. So if you want a, a written or more step-by-step -step version of this tutorial, you can just go there. And then if you really decide to go down the Pandoc rabbit hole, the documentation and user's guide for Pandoc is extremely um, extensive and detailed. So be assured that that rabbit hole is very deep and very fruitful. Okay, so back to installation. I'll click on installing. And the first thing is I will go to Pandoc's download page. You can see it's a GitHub repository. I'll scroll down here. And since I'm using a Mac, I will click on the OS X installer. I'll save the file. And once it's downloaded, I'll go to my Downloads folder. You can just barely see it on the bottom of the screen here. And I'll click on the Pandoc installer. And from there, it's just like a regular installation. You hit Continue, you hit Continue, you hit Agree, Install for this computer, you say Install, you type in your password, and you'll see here that we're good to go. So I'll close that. I'll move the installer to the trash, and then I'll also get this window out of the way. And with the window out of the way, I'm going to open a program that comes with every Mac. It's called the Terminal. And for those of you who don't know, the Terminal is where you enter direct text-based commands into the Mac operating system. If you're doing this in a Windows machine, you would run the CMD command or the PowerShell command from the uh, Start menu. Now the terminal can be a little intimidating, so we're going to keep it simple here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that Pandoc is installed. So I'll simply type in pandoc-version and hit Enter. And you can see that it gives me the version of Pandoc that's installed and some other relevant information. If you're getting a message other than this, it means Pandoc isn't properly installed. So I would just install it again and see if you can work it out that way. Now let's leave the terminal for a second, and I just want to draw your attention to two files which are on my desktop. The first is named test.txt, so it's a text file. And then the other one is the test library. It's a bib file that I made in the previous video. If I open test.txt, 
you can see that I've written this using Markdown. So for example, if I go to the beginning, at the top, I have the title, author, and date, following the format I showed you in a previous video. I have a section header marked with a hashtag, introduction. And if I scroll down to the next section, you can see that I also have several citations that I've added. And these are citations that are in my Zotero library and therefore also in my bib file. And if from here I scroll all the way to the end of the document, you can see that I have a section, but there aren't any references there yet. Okay, let's close this file. Go back to the terminal. Now because both the document I want to convert and the bib file are on the desktop, I need to make sure that I'm running pandoc within the desktop. So the first command that I'll put into the terminal is cd desktop. I'll hit enter, and you can see here that I'm now in the desktop directory, or folder. Now that I'm in the folder, I'm actually going to run pandoc, and I'm going to type in a complicated command. So I think the best thing is to actually go back to the presentation slides and show you bit by bit what that command will be and what it all means. For this demonstration, I'm going to convert the text file that I just showed you into a rich text file. So it'll be very similar to, say, a Microsoft Word document with all of the rich text formatting features that you see, but you can open it with basically any text editor. And here's the command that I'm going to use to do that. So let's go over it bit by bit. First, the word pandoc. That simply means that I'm telling the terminal to run the program pandoc. The next part, test.txt, I'm telling pandoc that I want you to convert this particular file. After that, we have dash dash bibliography, and then the name of the bib file, testlibrary.bib. And this does two things. First, it tells Pandoc to look through the document and find the academic citations that are there. That is, it's saying there are academic citations in this document, and I want you to convert them into regularly formatted text. And then the second thing is it's saying all of the metadata you need for these citations is in the file testlibrary.bib. And I should add here that the default format when you're running Pandoc is Chicago Author Date, which is very convenient for, you know, a lot of folks. But you can also use other formats, APA, MLA, really anything you can think of. But for now, I just want to keep things very simple. So we'll keep it as Chicago Author Date. So after bibliography, we have dash dash smart. And this is simply telling Pandoc to produce typographically correct output. So for example, when you have dash dash dash, when it's rendered in rich text, it will be a proper m dash. Or if I had three periods, it would be rendered as a proper ellipsis. Actually, dash dash normalize, which comes next, also helps with the formatting. So it will remove any repeated spaces, and it'll also do some other things to clean up the document. Next, we have dash s, which simply means Pandoc should create a standalone document. If we didn't have this command in here, basically Pandoc would fill the terminal window that I've showed you with the text instead of creating an autonomous file. Next we have dash O, which simply means put this converted text into its own file. And finally, the name of that file, which I'm gonna call success.rtf. And by including the extension .rtf, I'm telling Pandoc that I want it to convert this into a rich text file. Lastly, and I sort of hinted at this before, when pointing Pandoc to the file that's gonna be converted, to the bib file that it's going to use, and actually even to the file it's going to output, I only need to use the names of the files here, because everything is being run within the folder of the desktop. If the case were otherwise, for example, if I were keeping my test library within my documents folder, I would also need to include the file path. But again, we're just keeping things simple. So maybe you want to pause the video and then type this into the terminal window. And let's go back to the terminal now. Okay. Back in the terminal, you can see I'm in the desktop folder, and I've already entered the command that I reviewed with you back in the slides. So from there, I'll just hit enter. And if we go over to the desktop here, you'll see that there is an RTF file that wasn't there before, and it's called success. Let me close the terminal and open up the file for you. And you can see now everything has been beautifully formatted. We have title, author, date, the sections, if I scroll down, you can see that the citations I had written in Markdown are now properly formatted citations. And if I scroll all the way to the end, you can see that the references have been generated. And so that's how Pandoc works. It's just that easy. Thanks for watching this video on Pandoc. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my new videos, because boy, you would feel bad about that. Leave your comments and questions below. I would love to hear ideas you have for future videos. You can follow me at Dr. Nerdies, 
And of course, check out my other videos. There's lots of other great stuff here on academic writing in plain text.